following. Objective three, we want to add and subtract vectors algebraically. The sum, difference, scalar, multiple, and magnitude of algebraic vectors are defined in terms of their components. So in our definition here, we're going to suppose that b is equal to a sub 1 times i sub 1 plus b times 1 times j is equal to the components a sub 1 and b sub 1. Then we let w equal a sub 2 times i plus b times 2 sub b sub 2 times j, which is then equal to the components a sub 2 and b sub 2. These are two vectors and alpha and scalar. Then we have all of our properties here. So we can state that b plus w can be the sum of a sub 1 and a sub 2 times i plus the sum of b sub 1 and b sub 2 times j, which then gives us the components of the sum of a sub 1 and a sub 2 and the sum of b sub 1 and b sub 2. Very similarly with b minus w, we end up with the difference of a sub 1 and a sub 2 and the difference of b sub 1 and b sub 2. Then alpha times d just gives us our final components of alpha times a sub 1 times alpha times and alpha times b sub 1. And lastly, that the magnitude of b is then going to be equal to the absolute value of a sub 1 squared plus b sub 1 squared. And here we have some images that are illustrating these different properties. So in A, we have an illustration of property 2. So remember here that we're just adding these vectors. So we added w to v. This gave us a long length here, v plus w, which we see is the sum of a sub 1 and a sub 2, and the sum of b sub 1 and b sub 2. Then b, we have our illustration of property 4 for alpha greater than 0. So we just say that alpha times b is then going to be alpha times a sub 1 and alpha times b sub 1. And as you see, we have an illustration of property 5. So we have that the uh, magnitude of b is equal to the distance from 0 to p sub 1. So then the magnitude of b is going to be a sub 1 squared plus b sub 1 squared, the square root of that whole value. So we can see here that with our different um, properties, we can explain them uh, graphically as well. So for example two, we're going to say that if the vector v is equal to 2i plus 3j, which is equal to um, the components 2 and 3, and w is equal to 3i minus 4j, which is equal to the components 3 and negative 4, Let's go ahead and find v minus w. So if we have v minus w, we can write this out in one of two ways. We can use our terms i and j, or we can just write them out as components. So let's go ahead and do both. So first we're going to do i and j vectors. Which if we use our i and j vectors, this means that our vector v minus vector w it's going to end up being uh, our a sub 1s and a sub 2s. So we'll have a sub 1 minus a sub 2. So we'll have 2 minus 3 times i. And then we'll have plus b sub 1, which is 3, minus b sub 2, all times j. 2 minus 3 is just going to be negative 1. So we have negative 1i plus 3 minus negative 4, which is going to end up being a 7j. So this is equal to negative i plus 7j. So that would be one of our answers there if we wanted to use our i and j vectors. We could also use components. Or if we use our components, looking at our equations here, we can just subtract out our different component values without having to use any i's or j's. So if we have vector v minus vector w, this is going to be equal to 2 minus 3 and 3 minus negative 4, which is then equal to the values of negative 1 
and seven. So those would be our components then of the difference between V and W express in our two different ways. So we have our I and J vectors and we also have our components. So you may be asked to show one or the other, especially when doing homeworks and quizzes and exams. Then objective four, we wanna find a scalar multiple and the magnitude of a vector. So example three, vector V is equal to two I plus three J, which is equal to two or the components two and three. And the vector w is equal to 3i minus 4j, which is the components 3 and negative 4. Then we want to find a, 3 times v, and b, the absolute value of w. So starting with a, we have 3 times our vector v. So we have a scalar times our vector. And if we have a scalar times our vector, remember if we look here, we see that we can multiply um, that value into our components or straight into our i and j units. So we still want to express both, but it's maybe not necessary to clarify which is which at this point. So for part a, we have our scalar three times vector v, which means we have three times two i plus three j which then we can say is equal to three times two times i plus three times three times j, which then can simplify to six i plus nine j. Or if we write this in components, we would get six comma nine. So those would be our two equal answers in this case. Then for part B, we have the magnitude of W, which if we look at our equations again, we would see that the, uh, the magnitude of W in this case would be the square root of A sub one squared plus B sub one squared. So our magnitude of W, which I forgot to put the layer on, there we go. It's going to be equal to the square root of three squared plus negative four squared. Three squared is going to be equal to nine. Negative four squared is gonna be 16, which the sum of those values is 25, which is then equal to five. So the magnitude of the vector W in this case would be equal to five. So whether you're doing these algebraically or not, they're fairly simple to use. They have normal properties that we see in just your normal multiplication with different values, you know, um, all the same normal properties that we see very often. Um, so there's not really a whole lot of new things going on except for the equations themselves. All right, then objective five, we wanna find a unit vector. Recall that a unit vector u is a vector for which u is equal to one. Remember we said we were gonna come back to this. And it's useful to find a unit vector u that has the same direction as a given vector v. So for our theorem, the unit vector in the direction of v, we say that for any non-zero vector v, the vector u is equal to v divided by the magnitude v is a unit vector that has the same direction as v. So sometimes it can come in handy to find the unit vector. And if we do, this is the equation we would use. Objective six, we're gonna find a vector from its direction and magnitude. If a vector represents the speed and direction of an object, then it's called a velocity uh, vector. If a vector represents the direction and amount of a force acting on an object, it's called a force vector. So suppose we are given the magnitude of vector v of a non-zero vector v and the direction angle alpha, where alpha is between zero and 360 degrees, or between the vector v and i. To express vector v in terms of magnitude and alpha, find the unit vector u having the same direction as v. 
So this would then give us that B is equal to the magnitude of B times cosine of alpha I plus sine of alpha J, where alpha is the direction angle between V and I. So all right, example four, I wanna find the direction angle alpha of V when V is equal to four I minus four J. So we have our graph here of our function. We have our vector V, which is equal to four I minus four J. We have this point here. We see our angle, angle alpha is going around and landing on our line segment here. And we see four and negative four is our terminal point. So to find alpha, we can use terminal point for negative four and the fact And we're using the fact that tangent of alpha is going to be equal to negative four over four. So we took y divided by x, which is then equal to negative one. So in order to find where tangent of alpha equals negative one. We can look to the unit circle. If we look at the unit circle, we want to find the values where sine and cosine or x and y are the same values, but sine is negative and cosine is positive. So in that case, if we look at the unit circle to find the degree measurement, we would end up finding that for alpha between zero and 360 degrees, the direction angle is 315 degrees. And we would just get this from our unit circle. So essentially to find our direction angle alpha of our vector, all we did was take our terminal point, um, use facts that we already know. So something like tangent of theta, or sorry, tangent of alpha is gonna be equal to negative four over four, which was then equal to negative one. And then just finding where tangent of alpha would be equal to negative one, just using the unit circle. All right, then objective seven, our last one here, we wanna model with vectors. So because forces can be represented by vectors, two forces can combine the way that vectors add. So a vector F1 and F2 are two forces simultaneously acting on an object. The vector sum of F1 plus F2 is the resultant force. The resultant force produces the same effect on an object that obtained when the two forces F of 1 and F of 2 act on the object. So really all we're saying here is that we're applying vectors to a more real life uh, physics application, which would then be result in force. Well, let's go ahead and do a problem here. So example five, we have that two movers require a force of magnitude 300 pounds to push up a piano up a ramp inclined at an angle of 20 degrees from the horizontal. So we wanna know how much does a piano weigh? So first of all, let's label a few things. We're gonna state that our vector F1 is going to be the force of gravity. Because if we look at our picture here, 
F1 is the value going straight down, so that's our force of gravity. F2 is this slight, slight angle here. This is going to be pushing upwards, so this is going to be the force required to move the piano. up the ramp. Then lastly, F3 is going to be this value here. So it's not quite our, quite our gravity, but it is going to be the force of the piano against the ramp. All right, so we've now labeled each one of our different forces that are occurring, so the three forces that are occurring. Then we can see that the angle alpha between the ground and the ramp, which we said is 20 degrees here, I guess we did not technically label our angle alpha, so we can just call it the angle. You could call it alpha if you would like as well. You could name it anything at this point since it's not really uh, labeled. So the angle between the ramp and the ground is the same as the angle between F1 and F3 because the triangles A, B, C, and B, D, E are similar triangles. So if we have similar triangles, this means that our angle measurement is going to be the same. So we have the angle between F1 and F3 is also 20 degrees, while the angle between the ramp and the ground is 20 degrees as well. So we have the angle of BAC is equal to the angle of DBE, which is then equal to 20 degrees. So we determined that both of these angles are 20 degrees. Then to find the magnitude of F, F1, which remembers the weight of the piano, So remember, this was the force of gravity that is acting on the piano. So the weight of the piano is going to be uh, our magnitude of F1. It wouldn't end up being the piano against the ramp or the force required to move the piano up the ramp since those don't exactly directly correlate to uh, the actual weight of the piano. So to find the magnitude of F1, which we're saying is the weight of the piano, we are going to calculate sine of 20 degrees is equal to the magnitude of F2 divided by the magnitude of F1. We know that the magnitude of F2 is 300 degrees, or sorry, 300 pounds. This was given to us in our uh, problem. So we have 300 pounds 
divided by still the magnitude of F1. So we can go ahead and rewrite this problem so that we're solving for our magnitude of F1. And when we do, we get that this is going to be equal to 300 pounds divided by sine of 20 degrees. Then using a calculator to find this value, this would end up giving us about 877, which is the weight of our PN. So finally, he can state the piano uh, weighs about 877 pounds. So that's be how we would take everything that we just learned about vectors and we could go ahead and apply it to something a little more uh, real worldy. Um, and in this case, physics. So it's often applied to physics, um, but you can see it being applied in other ways as well. So all right, that wraps up section 9.4. So I will see you again in our chapters eight and nine review.